Welcome to my humble little office. My name is R. Keith Andrews. I am a spiritual guide and paranormal adept. The journey continues today on April 15, 2024, at approximately 4.30 p.m. PST. Now, I've returned to this world for one primary purpose, and that is to remind people that working together, we can make this a better world for virtually everybody. Now, I build myself the spiritual guide because the tools I offer are the exact same tools I personally use in my day-to-day -day life. And the philosophies of life I talk about are the same philosophies I personally use to guide virtually every movement I make. Now, with this in mind, I know these tools will, will work for you because they do continue to work for me and have worked for literally thousands of others over the years with various degrees of, of success depending on their own efforts. Now, Today, we're taking a look at, quite seriously, you and the off-world. Okay, you may know them as aliens, you may know them as extraterrestrials, maybe ultra-terrestrials. It doesn't matter if you know them as a peanut butter sandwich. Okay, the reality is, they are very real. And I know there are many of you out there that still go, oh, humans are the top of the totem pole. If that's the case, we're in serious trouble. L.A. Moon, how you doing? Glad you could join us. You know, and I mean, look at that. We're barely through the door. we got four people in, in the area. Steve, you are in with the gold today. Welcome back. Glad you could join us. And I do hope your day's been going well. Now, we are trying a couple of new things. The first thing I'm looking at, though, is a very problem that has been propagated for literally centuries. Valerie, you are in with the silver today. Congratulations. You know, for centuries, like, and well, millennia, really, for at least the last, and we'll just take the short run, the last 5,000 years, people have been taught that, you, that you've got to have all this stuff, you've got to fear everything, the Egyptians took it to a, to a whole new level. And 7,000 years ago, they started burying themselves with their belongings in the hopes, in the, in the belief that they would take all of their gold with them. Well, a couple of problems there. Here we are 7,000 later, 7,000 years later, we're finding all sorts of neat little things. Like, certainly, there was stuff buried in the pyramids. But in case you had noticed, the people aren't still there. And since the stuff is, apparently it didn't go with them. And Joe, there we are. You are in with bronze today, Joe. Hope your day is going well. You know, I've been trying to get things done. I've been busy in the office all day today, making certain I've got certain projects out of the way. Now that I'm done this, today's stream, when we get done, I've still got a stack of, of jobs I've got listed for myself. It's like this deep, I swear. I swear a lot, but that's beside the point. Now, I want to look at a couple of things. First and foremost, like, like I said, the you and the off-worlders. Now, what kind of a possible impact could you have on the on the society of the off-worlders people ask me regularly how do you reach out and make contact with these people well the reality is i don't have a tried and true method what i do know for certain is that the more the more amicable you are with the other people with the other humans around you the more likely you seem to be being picked up and the reason for that is one of the major projects these guys are working on is researching social interaction with humans. Now, they've got all kinds of examples of races that will fight each other to the death. Okay. Um, now, I keep forgetting the name of them. So, I'm just going to look them up. This neat little book here, Races of the Worlds, 59 races that I personally have dealt with face to face. Now, whether you believe that or not is entirely up to you. 
the reason I've written it all down is simply because, uh, there we go, is I keep wanting to spell it with a G. Uh, okay. Whether or not you want to believe it, that becomes your issue. Uh, okay. I'm not here to prove much of anything except if you follow the tools we talk about. Uh, okay. If you if you if you follow the rules that we talk the guidelines we talk about, the ones that are in, included in these books, believe in yourself and follow your dreams. You put these tools to work, and I will not guarantee they will work for you. I will guarantee that there have been thousands of people that have taken these tools and put them to use. I pray I'm one of them. Of, I am one that utilizes them consistently. Okay, now, just look at this. Cowie, you are in with honorable mention, it would seem. I think. Yeah, you are in with honorable mention. Now, you've looked in the airfare from Hawaii to Reno. Does this mean you're planning on coming down to Reno to join us? I'm just nosy in this case. You know, I mean, I am, you know, I am looking forward to the trip, and if everything goes right, my stress level collapses tomorrow. No, day after tomorrow. But things are coming into balance. Now I just have to make sure I do everything else. Oh, that's great, Callie. I will be getting now. I'm all. Okay, now the thing I'm looking at here, when we look back, everybody, people have been taught for centuries, well, for millennia, okay, thousands of years, that we have to fear everything. You gotta fear the end of the world, the shortage, you know, shortages in gas, food. Uh oh, gravity's on that list. I mean, we gotta start thinking, okay. Number one, 7,000 years ago, the Egyptians believed if they took all their stuff and buried it with them, they'd take it with them. Here we are 7,000 later. They're gone. The stuff is still there. You don't get to take the material stuff with you. Sorry, ain't going to happen. But you can, however, set things up so that you're remembered on this planet. Now, here's the thing. You know, we talk about immortality. Uh, okay. Here's a form of immortality. Now, I'm planning on living to the 22nd century anyway. But this little book here, it's got my name on it. Uh, okay. That's because I wrote it. Something to do with that. Now, that's a form of immortality. Uh, okay. You do something in the physical world and you will be remembered. The question is, are you going to do something positive? Are you going to promote the positive things going on? Or are you going to promote the negative ones? That's your call. But just remember, karmic law is simple. Energy out, energy in. Whatever you put out there, that's what you're setting your stand the stage up for. You know, the nice little, the nice little part of this is when we look at the off-worlders, I have the same discussions with them. Okay. You know, I have the same brilliant time, brilliant conversations. Well, when we, you know, did the other races believe in a, in a higher power? Absolutely. You know, what I got to see what that says. Oh, there you go. See, I gave up on Monday. To me, Monday, like Monday lost. Monday for the longest time was my Sunday. Now, I've moved my weekend to Wednesday and Thursday. But when we take a look at the off-worlders and your impact, you and because the off-worlders are paying so much attention to how mankind is do doing things, one of the things you got to remember is they are watching society here on the whole, 
But we'll get into this whole idea of them taking over, of them conquering Earth in a very short period of time here. Now, let's see a raise of hands, show of hands, guys. How many of you actually think that the off-worlders, the aliens, are gearing up to come back and to come here and wipe out Earth? You know, and wipe out and take it over. Take us all into slavery, either into slavery or put us on the menu. How many of you believe that, how many of you have been told and repeatedly told that this is the way things are going to go? I'm going to throw a real neat wrench in things here, okay, because there's this other neat little theory that the aliens came here to mine our gold. Gold is not the most effective mineral, okay, you know. Yeah, you know, and that's exactly the issue there, Steve. If they were interested in it, it would, it would have already happened. Gold is not the most useful and useful mineral. I will tell her metal in this case, but I will tell you it does look really nice. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, Joe. Joe, I'm still trying to figure out how I do that regularly. Yo, know, I've, I've talked to you guys about making changes. And the reason being, I know what happens with them. Okay? So when I talk to you guys about making changes to your life path, and you, because you're not doing something effectively, I chop that up to being, to being what I call true ignorance. You really, for whatever reason, haven't managed to get that sorted around. Okay, you haven't managed to figure it out. In my case, it was absolute abject stupidity. I knew better and I did it anyway. Okay, so, well, that's my coffee. I remember to go and grab my coffee. You know, there are priorities in life. Not that one. Yo, know, the thing we have to remember is when you start looking at the off-worlders, remember, there is little difference between them and us. Okay, the biggest difference in the off-worlders, in the off-worlders' way of life and mankind's is they've got better toys. That's just a terrible, a terrible um, image there, Storm. You know, Storm just suggesting we beware of athletes' uh, athletes' tongue. Nice part is, I don't have to worry about it. I am not what we call an athlete. Okay. You know, but on the other hand, when I look at it, I figured out not how to get one, not how to get two, but how to get three feet in my mouth all at the same time without taking somebody off. Now when we look at the at the at society on the whole, we have a whole pile of different races. Again, okay, yes, I did finally figure it out. Skin color and certain physiological differences, you may still be human, but you are likely a different race. I.e, we have the, the Caucasians, we have the blacks, we have the the so-called Native Americans. Okay, or Native Indians. We've got your Indians, your Chinese. You get the picture. They are all human. We know this because they can and they can breed with each other. Okay, now I do get a kick out of some of the things people have jumped to. Let's build artificial intelligence to do all our work. I got a slightly different idea on that. Why do we enhance our own actual intelligence? And do our own dang work. I know a lot of people are buying into this idea of, hey, push a button, lose 20 pounds. You know, attach this and this gizmo to your, to your abdomen. You'll get, you'll get abs of steel. You'll get a six pack in no time with no effort. Now, let's just ask one little question there. 
how many of the other races actually went through these same serious misconceptions? Okay, the Kinlars still are under the impression that the way to get glory is to kill off your, na- your neighbor in order to take the glory of Ant. In other words, if they're out hunting, they're at war, it doesn't matter. They are as dangerous to each other as they are to the enemy. When we are looking at your impact, now people have evolved. It used to be everybody would run around, carry a gun, carry a sword, any number of things. But we got to remember, swing first, ask if you're friendly second. I don't know about you, but if somebody shoots at me, I'm not in that am- much of an amicable, mo- amicable mood. But if while these off-worlders are watching, and yes, in answer to your question, many of them do actually take a look at what is going on on Earth as an idea. Okay, as a, if you will, a soap opera. But if you know that, the more the more amicable you behave to each other, okay, the better the better the resonance and the more the off-worlders can actually learn from you. You do realize killing your neighbor doesn't actually help. Okay, it doesn't make the world better. Because on top of the problem of you killing your neighbor, not only do you now have to figure out who the new neighbor is, but you can bet the other neighbors are not going to be happy either. You know, one of of the things we have to realize here is you can choose to stay in fear. Iowax, how are you doing? Glad you could join us. You know, you can stay living in fear. Absolutely you can. I don't understand the purpose in doing so. Okay. But you do have that option. Yeah, we're just, you know, we're just not going to go there, Iwax. Way too easy of a setup. But no. You know, when you, like, Iwax is going, my neighbor is a dentist. You know, they exist. Dentists, politicians, teachers. The important factor is whether you guys are getting along. If you're not getting along, there could be other issues. <coughs> that leads to which my lungs are But I've got, what do I got here? One thing. See, now I, I ended up I ended up playing hooky today. I had stuff I needed to get done, put it off. But yesterday on my list of things to do, I got 22, I got 19 things done yesterday. Now, it is only 10 to 5 Kelowna time right now. Okay. I've still got probably another five hours anyway. Before I'm going to start to tank. Which means I should get a fair chunk more accomplished. Now. Now here's the thing. We've been taught to fear. Fear everything. To fear change and everything else possible. Now let's jump ahead. With the idea. Oh the reptilians are up to this. The reptilians are up to that. We got to remember, number one, there are at least a dozen reptilian races that I've already identified. Okay, and they do not all have the same agenda. Does anybody know where that whole concept that the aliens had taken were taking over the major corporations and were taking over their positions in royalty? Does anybody have any? where that originated. It's actually quite comical in a sense. Put my eyeballs back on here.
Yeah. Now, L.A. Now, Storm goes, I imagine getting a straight answer out of your neighbors is like pulling teeth. Um, Pretty much, you know, because most people are afraid to actually speak uh, speak what they know. I can see this conversation over here has gone really sideways, but that's okay. Like I said, the fact of the matter is this room is supposed to be safe for everybody, meaning interaction with each other. Because without communication, we are going to have some pretty severe problems. But when we take a look at everything, at the whole idea of our reptilians taking over the planet, think of it this way. If we look at, if we look back at 1977 through 1982, there was a series out called V. Okay. And the whole premise was a race taken over Earth. Okay. They were more to the point were in the process of taking over Earth by replacing key members of of the monarchies, of the government, of the industry, of the industry mo Am I getting things run? Um, now, this will give you an idea. Now, of course, in this book here, we have this chap. This chap is a really good friend of mine. This guy's name is Kulak. Okay. Now, he is Srizazian. This here is a, is a gentleman. This is a primary protagonist. In the Ilderbrocking Chronicles. He is only five foot eight. Now, you can see with the size of this chap here, you can see how that will be intimidating. Okay, but you gotta remember no race has a monopoly on either good or bad. There are decent people in all in all walks of life. Oh, I agree with you there wholeheartedly, L.A. I mean, this go, this is like the advertising. Okay. You watch many of the advertisements that are coming out, many of the movies that are coming out. I swear they're taking old movies and just regurgitating them, giving them a twisted outlook and, and going, oh, this is the new, the new reality. Um, Philip, Philip, how you doing? Glad you could join us. No, he is, he, the funny part of that is Kulak is stuck at eight, eight feet tall, roughly. He's not the biggest of them, but he is the friendliest one I've dealt with. Yeah, and that's just it there, Joe. On the other hand, you don't desire to meet your neighbor. That's fine. At least you're not there making up neat little stories about what they're involved in without getting to know them. I do, however, I do still encourage you to turn around and get to meet them. You know, the fact of the matter is if you're looking to improve your social skills, kind of important to learn to use them. But... No, when we take a look at Strazazians, they do not change shape. Now, on the other hand, if you watch back about 10 years, there was a there was a series on called um, called Deep Space Nine. They had a gentleman, they had an alien race in there that they kind of like, well, his name was Odo. And, and I forget what they called the what they actually called the race. But there, that is a perfect rendition of the Korlock. Korlock are absolute metamorphs. Now, they do not get bigger. They don't get smaller. They maintain their mass, but they have no functional skeletal system. But when we take a look at, at fear-mongering, oh, he's different, therefore he's out to kill us. You know, 
I got to ask one day in the bar to, 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 to walk up to this, to this black man. And the only reason I say he was black is because his skin was. I'm not going to tell you what they what I was asked to call him. Guy goes, why don't you go up and call that man, call that man this really derogatory term. And I looked at the guy and I says, well, I was personally thinking of living through the night. Because you got to remember, this guy was a linebacker from, for the BC Lions. And as you can well imagine, if you're talking about linebacker and football, you're not looking at a small, a small chap. <sighs> oh, thanks. So, yeah, changelings. They actually, well, when I met them, um, I found out their, their name is Corlock. Okay. Now, if you look at the movie Space 19, or no, uh, Space, uh, space uh, what was it? A Space Odyssey two, uh, 2001. Okay. That ship is the one that the Corlocks use. Okay, and there is no way a human will ever be on, on one of their ships alive. That's just not physically possible. Because those guys run their ships on, bio, on biomagnetic discharge. Okay, they are the electricity that runs those ships. As you can well imagine, if you're looking at somebody that can, that can flatten completely out into a thin film, you can picture how much trouble that's going to make for humans to get on board. Fortunately, the Corlock are not interested. They're not doing the research. Okay. Some of them are involved in it, but they work with other corporeals. Now, what we got to remember is that every race that's out there, some look human, some do not. Okay. Now, where is it? That's an excellent question. Trying to move my body isn't working well. This is me, so it'll be coming out pretty quick. See, um, in April's edition of Positive Perspectives, there is a there's a picture in there of the Moldars. In this one. We have a picture of, I believe we have, yep, there we are. This one has the Archon. Now, the Archon, our race is really neat. They start off essentially as a parasite, but they grow to be bigger than a, than a planet. Okay, so we are, we are adding that. Now, of course, May has, what does May have here? I don't have the number. I don't have the pages numbered. I've got to do that today. As a matter of fact, that reminds me. Yeah. Okay. I was keeping it to eight pages. It's now at ten. I don't actually have a size. But what I am looking at doing is getting more information to you. And yes, I am taking submissions from other people. I just don't pay for them because flat out I'm not paying for what I'm doing. Okay, that's just the way that is. Now, one of the neat things about this is you have, humans have a neat capacity to take a look at a, at a totally rational situation and go, okay, here's the way we should go. And humans instinctively will take a complete laugh talk, do something completely out of sync, and still land on their feet. Okay. This is what we got to realize. Is that this is what humans are bringing to the table. The ability to jump to an answer. That has nothing to do with rationality. And still make it work. And I shouldn't say it's got nothing to do with it. It's just a twisted outlook on it. Now. one of the, I'm just looking back here at the fear mongers. You know, L.A. was saying, I, I wish the fear mongers would spend more time thinking and less time watching television. 
thing is, it's not just saying, you know, it's not just the big people going, oh, you're going to die. It's, it's not just them. The moment people are showing anything that's abnormal, all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's scary, that's frightening. Let's shoot it and see if it's happy. I don't know. To me, if I'm walking down the street and somebody opens fire on me, I'm not likely to be in a positive, in a you know, positive in a positive uh, outlook on that. Uh oh. Now I'm not sure where that came from, there, Philip. But you asking me if I like pineapple on pizza or pineapple on pizza is just weird. Because, simply put, let's put it this way. Myself, I like it. Of course, I like pineapple on most things. Okay, now don't get don't get carried away on bizarre ideas there. But, to my way of looking at it, it's not a problem. One thing we have to realize, though, if we are going to continue fearing, you know, going, oh, the off-worlders are going to try and kill us, why push to get off the planet? If they're going to kill you when they get you when you get out there, there's enough dangers. Ah, yes, that works. You know, I've seen some bizarre things take place. Okay, and don't mind me; I'm a little slow on occasion. My own son will come to me quite regularly, and he'll tell me something. I'll look at him, and he'll go. Um, Dad, that was funny. I'm like, oh, okay. I don't seem to have a whole lot of a funny bone. Okay. And Lord knows I do my best not to bang the end of it. But when we start looking at the off-worlders, take a look at how they interact. Every now, in a car, you've got one driver. On a ship, okay. Whether it's a cruise ship or a battleship, doesn't matter. There are a number of different people working on that ship that have to do their own job. Okay. When you're looking at the at the at running a restaurant, running a business, lots of people hold down individual jobs. Each are extremely important. When you start getting into outer space, this is where you have to rely on people wholeheartedly to do their job. Because if you don't, we have a problem like we did back in Atlantis. That was a rush, not... You know, the thing with Atlantis was that people are looking for where did it sink. In my experience, and bear in mind, I was on the, dang, on the ship at the time, it didn't sink. But it did leave a lot of mess behind. Now, down the road, somebody find out that I'm completely off kilter. I'm jokes, but some of my favorite jokes don't make laugh. Uh, I'm not entirely, yeah, I'm not quite certain how joke is good. Okay, some things make me laugh. Of course, the sad part is when I'm watching a movie, if I watch bullies getting their cry, their comeuppance. Okay, I find that absolutely hilarious. I watched a, a video, it was a newscast, and all it was was this person was doing just a social, look at the amount of, of people on the streets, there's so much excitement, and all of a sudden in the, in the screen, okay, on the video, you watch this guy come running down the corner, running down the road. Okay. The guy comes run down the road, grabs the grabs the purse off this little old lady off her shoulder. Now bear in mind, she's on a cane. And I'm guessing by the look of her, she was probably in her early 80s. Okay, at the youngest. Well, he grabs the purse. This is right on a live on a live feed. He grabs the purse and she and when it starts to drop, she grabs it and she spins her hand around. Traps the Randy strap over her wrist. And then she's gone over her head and back over. 
this poor guy's going back and forth over top of her. And you hear her screaming, you know, clear as a bell. Don't you ever pick on a little poor defenseless little old lady. You leave us alone. Right. And she's just back and forth over her shoulder. And, you know, they're catching this. I'm going, holy mackerel. You know, now there's somebody that got what they needed. Now, I see Nathan has just come through the door. And let, let's see, that is not my require. I gotta go down here. And where is Nathan? Here we are. And this is the link to Nathan's show. Whoop. Oh, bonus. Storm beat me to it. That works out well. So, absolutely. Drop in. Give Nathan a listen. If you like what he has to say, Give him a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel and then share the daylights out of the thing. You know, we have to choose. Are we going to continue? Uh oh. Oh, there you go. Yeah, but then you're all you're pretty much always working there, aren't you, Nathan? One of these days, I am going to figure out how to meet you in person. But for the moment, that's going to have to hold. I've got my travel for this year already booked solid. <laughs> oh, by the way, I started doing something yesterday, and I couldn't get the dang thing to work. But, take that, put that back over there. This funny little case that I couldn't get open finally figured out how to identify which key it was. There we go. See, what I really wanted out of it was this thing. My passport. Primarily because I wanted to be able to actually get in there, you know, get it and take it with me so I could actually travel. But now I know how to remember which key it was. And that's usually an important factor. Told you I'd figure it out. Something we have to remember when we're dealing with the off-worlders. Number one, yes, like humans, off-worlders do have, with their own species, they do have certain common traits. Oh, yeah, there is no one we got, Monk. Oh. Yeah, I like that. That is actually not a bad thing there, Philip. Philip goes, my uncle told me it's a bad idea to grab a bag and run off with it in the war zone. Because you might have just pulled the pin on the grenade. Some people booby trap their, their purses. Yeah. My brother, when, when he was going to school, he had a, a, a female friend that used to carry a literal brick in the bottom of her bag. Now, I'm a firm believer that if you treat people decently, on the whole, you'll get decent treatment back. Okay. Unfortunately, way too many people have bought into the whole fear side of things. Oh, you know, we're evolving. Funny part is, yes, humans are evolving. Some of the senses that were shut down, the mankind has trained itself to shut down. Some of them are coming back online. Yeah. What do we got here? If I do that and that, I can see. But nope, that didn't work. All 
I absolutely agree with you there, Philip. You know, and of course, me being me being me, I have a bad habit or a good habit. I'm not sure which. And it doesn't matter who I'm who I deal with. Okay. Understand in this world, I'm very much a pacifist. In past lives, not so much so. But you gotta remember, many people will see fear as a sign of weakness. I see fear as a, as a loaded gun. You know, my I remember one individual, and he'd have been three or four years, and he'd have been no two years younger than me at the time. I watched I watched a whole pile of people pick a fight with him. He went head to head with twenty at the same time. Turned out picking a fight with him wasn't a real good idea. But like I tell people. When we're dealing with off-worlders, yes, watch the skies. Remember, the, the thing that you got to remember about, about the way the is that we are not talking about aliens showing up here. We are talking about more people looking to the sky. Okay, more people paying attention to what's going on. Unfortunately, what I'm coming to understand as much of this attention is to avoid looking in the mirror and avoid looking at your own life. Now is the time to start changing what you're doing. Okay. Now, we take a look at the Sargon. Okay. The Sargon are a reptilian. They look like reptiles on Earth. But they are some 15 feet tall. Okay. They did the same thing mankind is trying to do. Net result, they had to leave. They had to leave three of their outposts completely stranded. However, well, I shouldn't say completely. What they did was they went, okay. We cannot support these outlying groups anymore. Okay. Yes, you colonized the planets. This is great. We can no longer support them. We're going to have to cut down. That is terrible, Valerie. Here we are in April and you're getting snow. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking April is the, little, the wrong time of year to get snow. I just hope mine up. We still got blue sky. Not to make you jealous. Sky, and what is our temperature doing? Degrees. Yeah, no, I, I I agree with you there, LA. LA just gone. We don't see much snow here. Yo, know, the thing is, if we are, if you look.
you're back. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't catch that part. I see. I just saw that as you were opening up. You know, I love technology, not, but the reality is we require it. Yeah, we are back, Philip. Unfortunately, technology and I have always had arguments. You know, fortunately, I don't have, you know, I was up in Quinnipiac now years ago, Valerie. Beautiful country out there. You know, I used to come up back in the early 2000s. I'd come up with the psychic fairs every Then, yeah, so because I like technology when I can find the right buttons to push, I can always find buttons to push. I'm just not sure if they're the right ones. But no, mankind is making the same silly I moves. Let's figure out how to do things really fast with little effort and less research. Because that always pans out well. Okay. I love the, the new commercials that are coming out. Oh, you can make all this money with no effort. And yet we still have a rise in inflation and a rise in, proper, in poverty. Does this not sound like there's something being missed? You know, I look at the whole nine yards going a little. You know. Give me half a second here. Hey, Kel. I will see if I can close it again. I'm just trying to see if that helps. I am back. Still trying to figure out how to get a better return, better signal in here. Now, when we look at, at your impact on your impact on our society, is easy. Okay, when people start treating pray, treating each other better, okay, as in treat each other the way you desire to be treated, that will change the way our world is working. The same thing applies to the off world. Now you got to remember, they're watching what's going on as well. And we still have the ability to really, to really. Yeah, that's, that's why. Yeah, what do we do here? Well, that, and Philip, you, the economist there is absolutely correct. Now, figuring out why you have the problem can be a challenge. Okay, but I will tell you right off the bat, and do your own research. If everybody is taught that you have to fear what's going on, if we are all taught that, and you live your life based on fear of lack of, fear of shortages, fear of crime, you want to change that? Okay. It's going to sound really egocentric, but what the heck. This funny little magazine, okay, 
I don't put, well, I guess right now I still have a college newsletter until my graphic artist puts the cover together. Because that seems to be the big difference. But I refuse to put in who ripped off who, who robbed who, and who embarrassed who. Not going to happen. Okay, there's lots of places you can go to get in to look at that. But when we start focusing on the positive side, on the celebrations, not on the wars, okay, that's when, when people start developing a little bit of hope. Okay, that's when people start looking out to the, to the world going, hey, maybe I can go out there and enjoy it. Yes, bad things happen. Absolutely. And not every person you run into is going to be a decent person. But if we, if we take all of our attention and we go, hey, this person robbed so-and-so, put the name on the front page. Most criminals are doing things to get, you know, to get attention. Okay. You know, most of them, there are those that go, I'm going to rob a bank because I feel I deserve more money than they've got. It's a wonderful thought. Not. But this is why when you find a way to do something really easy, it's not necessarily a good move. Okay? Because doing things without effort takes the, the feeling, in my opinion, it takes that feeling of reward out of the equation. That won't work. You know, one thing I have found is the more effort somebody has to put into accomplishing something, the more rewarding it is when they get it done. You know, so now I'm looking and going, okay, how do we take your world and the off-world, the off-worlders world, and the world of the ancient races, mesh them all together to make one globe. Because I will tell you, this is doable. Okay? But you got to start asking, why are you focusing on the negative? Like, let me ask you this. I know there's lots of you out there that will sit and listen to the news. But at the same time, Oh, Philip, you have no idea how common that is. Well, maybe you do. I had the same thing working tw working 27 years on a psychic line. People would come to me and they'd ask, how do I deal with this problem? I'd go, here's how to deal with it. They'd go, I don't want to do that. Then they come back to me a week later. My life is still a mess. I'm like, yeah. So do this. But I don't want to. Then don't call me back and complain. Okay. Yeah. So goes, his advice was very expensive. So why did they pay for him to examine their situation? People, in a nutshell, Philip, people are looking for somebody to blame. You know, that's just it. You know, you take 600, 600 uh, milligrams of ibuprofen. You know about the side effects, but you're doing it voluntarily. You'll love this. When I end up with a migraine, it takes 13,000 milligrams of acetaminophen in one shot to take the edge off it. But then I've got an immune system that's stupid. Now, I will be happy to tell you, though, I used to have the same, I have a lot of trouble with, with, um, with vertigo. This, standard salt, just uh, all I do at this point, this I keep in my room, because, well, I keep putting my finger on it. Okay, but what I found and I got told, oh, heavens no, Philip, it's supposed to kill you. 
but I only do it once and I'm good for a year and a half. And I will tell you, I do know that I cannot, my body does not take 14,000 milligrams well, but it takes, it takes 13,5. But absolutely it's unsafe. It will play havoc over prolonged periods with your kidneys. Okay, kidneys or liver, I'm not entirely certain which. But you put 13,000 milligrams of, well, let me see here. Just because I'm curious. Brain box. I take 13,000 milligrams. Oh, okay. 13,000 milligrams of shit thought is about 13 ounces. Yeah, 13,000 milligrams, 13 grams. So 13 grams, you're looking at about a half an ounce. Yeah, Steve, in one shot. I never recommend that to anybody, my own kids included. Okay, the ibuprofen, I talked to the pharmacist, and she knew what my system was like. I told her I needed something over the counter because I had a migraine. So she goes and she gets the stuff, and she goes for the if you take two of these, a i.e. a thousand milligrams. She goes, that's prescription strength. She goes, in your case, you better take at least six to eight. Well, well, six to eight didn't do much, but yeah. This is one of the advantages, one of the reasons why I don't take medication is because I need so much of it. Like when I got, when I was in the hospital, when I broke my arm, they gave me, they gave me three shots of morphine in order to, to dull the pain. I walked out of there less than 24 hours later, clear as a bell. Poor doctors, they just look at it going, um, what do we do about that? Now, the thing is this. Okay. Oh, by the way, like I said, 13 milligrams works out to about, what is it now? 13 milligrams would be about 13 ounce, um, yeah, about 13 grams, which is about a half an ounce of the toxin. Uh, okay. Now, when we are dealing with society itself, with human society, it's easy. You know how other people think. You know exactly how humans think. I don't think at all. But when you deal with when you're dealing with people, the more you communicate, the more likely you are to find common ground. Okay. And all you gotta do is ask before you put your foot in your mouth. Good luck with that for some of you. I know it's a real good luck for me, but um you have to ask yourself. If you were dealing with this person, if they were dealing with you with the same problem, would you like the way you were dealing with them? If the answer is no, make absolutely certain that you change the way you're doing things. Now, where are we here? Now, of course, because we know, well, Okay, you may suspect, I know for certain, many races are watching the way humans are evolving because mankind is about to enter the interstellar community. Okay, they're already entering the interplanetary one. Okay, but the off-worlders are striving to figure out how well that's going to work. It's up to you guys to figure out that in your own community, now most people, most humans, regardless of where you live on the planet, live inside a, a nine-block square area. Okay. When, that's where you do your shopping, you go to your schools, you go to the gas station. Right. That's where you go to the restaurants is inside that nine-block area. That's nine blocks square, making it 81 square blocks. Um, the answer there, 
uh, the answer there, Philip, is they don't have any real big problem with you with you visiting Mars. I mean, it does take man a lot longer to get there than it takes the mind of the Martokians to get here. Neat little part there. Um, you know, the neat little part there is absolutely you're welcome to visit. Go and get to know them. They are friendly people. They're a lot more warlike. And they do have a defensive treaty with the Venusians. Okay. You know, but going to visit Mars isn't a problem. They come here regularly. But going to, as humans have put it, oh, we're going to colonize Mars. Mars is occupied. Okay. Now, granted, you know, humans can, can land on, on the surface. They can absolutely stay put on the surface. Because the Martokians moved underground a long time ago. You know, yeah, it depends. I mean... Yeah, I'm just looking at it. Valerie's just gone. Not me. I live out towards Barkerville. I haven't seen a Sasquatch yet. You know, I live right in Kelowna. And I've only seen Ogopogo once. And he didn't mind you. I know why. But when we start looking at the, at the off-worlders, you got to remember, they've got the same questions voiced in different languages, but the same concerns, and they certainly don't have a problem with people coming to meet them. Okay, I did find out. Now, I don't know if all Martokians are this way inclined. I know the one I ran into in Dairy Queen absolutely loved his ice cream. Absolutely loved it. But there's a reason they don't get it there. Okay, they've got different things they deal with. But what we've got here is a is a tiny first step into the cosmic world. Okay. Humans don't even know everything about their own planet or even a decent percentage of it. Now I forget what the percentages are, but mankind hasn't even mapped all of the of the Earth's surface. And yet they are so intent on getting off the planet. Now, granted, when I was a kid, I desired to get off the planet. Should have told them not to bring me back. And yes, in case you hadn't noticed, the throat's a little tied up. So, hopefully it'll hold out. But... When we look at the at the interaction with other people, you know, when we are looking at the at the off world, as you gotta remember, they are watching what people are doing, what people here are doing, but they're watching all levels of society. If so-called first world countries were to pay attention to the so-called third world ones, you'd find that, yes, they've got lower standards, they've got lower grade of living. You know, maybe their water supply is tainted. Maybe they don't have quite as much food around. But on the whole, watch how happy they are. Okay? They don't require all these electronics to be happy. Okay? The thing people have forgotten, that humans have forgotten, especially in more advanced areas. Adam, how are we doing? Glad you could join us. You know, the neat little part about it is people have been taught that we need all these electronic things to be happy. We've got to do things quickly with no effort, with virtually no effort, and ultimately no responsibility. I'm telling you that doesn't work well. You know, 
one of the things I did find is that when I'm working on doing something, if I can actually get, I'm a lot happier. I'm a lot, a lot more content with it. Oh, here you go. Give me a sec. Why did I bring this? Well, here's the thing. Here's a tool where if you use it right, and nope, okay. This is a tool that used right can bring many of you happiness. Okay, especially if you're a builder. Now, I'm pretty certain you guys recognize this thing. You know, if I'm just using this because I don't feel like going getting the nail. If you hold the nail properly and you hit it properly, you'll manage to build something. Most builders this will make happy. If you miss the nail and you hit your hand. This same tool is going to make you a whole lot less happy. Okay. Any tool can make you, it can either guide you towards happiness or towards misery. Okay. And any tool can be a tool for building, virtually any tool, for building or for destroying. This funny little detail here. Funny little pen. Okay, and by the way, these same analogies work for the other and for the all four races as well. They just have different methods of doing it. But think of the amount of, of, of positive impact you can have by using a pen properly and writing the writing the appropriate thing in on paper, and the amount of damage you can do if you write the wrong thing. Of course, then we have the other issue. Okay. A pen, and I know some of you have done this, hopefully by accident. Okay. But a pen, if you end up handling it wrong, you can actually impale yourself with it. Again, not going to make you overly happy. Off-worlders have the same thing. The one thing that I have found with many of the off-worlders is that they look in humans as being extremely fragile. But they're also very easy to repair. As a matter of fact, some of you, when I get when we get to Torino, I'll be able to show you what we've been talking about. Okay. Um, you know, when I get when I get into Reno. Some of the tools I use where it comes to healing come in, you know, come in very, very easily. Now, I got to check something here just because I'm nosy. You know, the neat.
And we are back. I love technology on occasion. Not as much as you might think, but what the heck. So, pull this open and see if that helps. One day when the estate clears, I will upgrade. Are we still, we are still looking. Um, one of the things that we got to remember here, the only difference between the, the fundamental difference between off-worlders and ancient races is literally the type of toys they've got. Okay, what is Citigoon Spam? Well, that's not done checking yet. One of the things I always look at is this. Is there any real, in your guys' eyes, is there any functional difference between the off-worlder society, the off-worlder society and mankind, aside from the obvious change in physiological configuration and the time and, and the type of toys they've got? You know, one of the things we have to realize is that it's up to us to really change the way things are going. Well, what do we do? Oh, no, Christine, we seem to be having a lot of trouble today. Mind you, I was having trouble the last couple of days, so... Yeah, and this I think in all in all like I just know I was just looking up here a little. Um, LA, I absolutely agree with you that acts of you know acts of of service in the community do bring a sense of a sense of happiness, a sense of contentment. I don't leave my house very much, so I don't do much of that. But when I do leave the house, I always go out of my way to make sure that I do my best to help people have a better day. Now, yeah, Ellie goes, I think it's likely they are, are much like, much like, I think that's much like us. Yeah. See, the neat part about it is they have the same concerns. And just like people who collect up tigers and fish, you know, Tigers and monkeys and lions on an eye and, you know, you get the idea. You know, they have the same consideration for trying to make and trying to leave people's lives intact. You know, one of the neat things about it is the more that we share what's going on, and this is one of the reasons why I am, and one of the reasons why I am making the trip down to Reno, okay, is to meet some of you guys face to face. Okay, maybe the last time you ever want to talk to me, mind you, but that's a gamble I'm, I'm sort of dealing with. Yeah, well, that's what eventually happened in my case. You know, my first, my first, um, we'll try English. My first, first pickup was by the tail on. And rest assured, that was not an enjoyable run. Okay, what I ended up finding was I suffered a lot at their hands. And then at one point, 
when I finally got picked up by the by the um, when I finally got picked up at five years old by the Shazazians. Okay, that's when I found out what genuine compassion was like. You know, now granted, the young lass that picked me up and rescued me was, well, in a way, she was she was repaying a debt. Actually, in all fairness, it's quite literally that. But when you're looking at the off-worlders, any time that you feel like you've been taken, any time you feel like you've been abducted, i.e. missing time, you wake up and your clothes are in the wrong, on in the wrong order. I've seen people come back with their undershorts on the outside of their pants. Okay. It's very disconcerting. But if you do your best to remember that these guys are not intentionally causing a problem on the whole, you'll find it easier to cope. Okay. It's not that easy. That, you know, it's not easy to cope with. Don't get I mean, you might have had a lot of, you know, LA's just going, if I hadn't been startled by the pickup and upset by it, I might have had a lot of questions for them. Oh, you definitely would have. You've still got questions for them. At least in my eyes, you definitely would. But then you ask questions where many people are afraid to. But with our, with the, with the human race's ability To jump from a from a logical situation, take an absolutely bizarre takeoff, and still land on their feet. Okay, this is something that we bring to the table that absolutely scares the daylights out of the off-worlders. Okay, but you know, as, as that goes, um, you know, it is one of those things. You know, it is one of those things that they look at. You know, they are striving to understand how people react. And no, that's the funny part there, L.A. You know, when I was taken, in no event when I've been taken, never have I been, as, as you just said, I've never been molested. I was, however, as a wee lad, I was literally tortured. I mean, heck, they broke my right arm just to see how much pressure it would take. Now, I don't know. I did not have a good day that day. You know, but they can, like humans, you can't pin them down and go, they're all conquest oriented or they're all can you know, they're all um, aggressive carnivores. Yes, when you're dealing with a carnivorous race, okay, many of the reptilian, of the, of the reptilian races are listed as carnivores, and they do eat live food. But there are those that also prefer vegetables. And by the way, that's not necessarily a good thing. Okay. But we are looking at a, at a way where we are being drawn into, you know, we are being drawn into the, the galactic, you know, the galactic, the empire okay but we're being drawn into it by our own doing mankind has built rockets okay you know mankind has absolutely built rockets gotten off the planet i know there are people that are saying they're going you know the whole trip to the moon was just a publicity stunt to draw to drum up more money and i'm telling you the trip itself, I won't debate. They probably built one for later use. But the actual trip, I will tell you, did occur. Okay. They did get and then turned around and came back. Do I believe wholeheartedly they've done it multiple times? Absolutely. But that said, the when we talk about the Hollywood thing. You know about this this mock-up studio to to reshoot the video landing. 
Absolutely, I have no doubt they did that. But if you think about it, be a little hard to get a quality camera up on the moon. Okay. And for that matter, a flight gray, a camera crew. I'm thinking that could cause me to have some problems. Oh, that'd be great, Valerie. I look forward to it. You know, the neat part is, and I will be dealing with more of the reptilians right now, which one, oh, I'm dealing with the, um, like I said, I don't know. Do I have that up and running? Oh, there we are. Okay. Yeah. In in May. Well, I think that's wrong. I think that's the right color. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I've already got like I've already got May's is May is ready to go. June I've got I am dealing with with um painted figures. That, I, that are representative of the creatures I've got in the Elder Barking Chronicles. Now, understand something. These creatures are ones I've seen in other places. Okay. And there are some races that are out there that, I, that they are just simply different creatures that I will be adding the information to as well. Okay. This is just the way that Positive Perspectives is going. But we are also going to be looking at the idea of how can we start taking communities and getting people to work together, getting people to pay attention to what is, you know, what is down here in addition to what's going on up there. Because I will tell you, if we weren't making an impact, if the human race was not an interesting race, then the off-worlders wouldn't come here to study it. But you gotta remember, mankind is on the verge of either joining the galactic, the galactic, the galactic empire, you know, getting involved in outer space, or blowing itself back to the back to the Stone Age. It's up to us as individuals to decide what we're gonna let happen. Not just the elites, not just the military or the governments. Okay, and all the prayers in the world, how many people have ended up in an accident going, you know, and they, and they tell you they don't believe in God. 99% of people will start praying to God to help them when they're in a mind. Okay, what I'm looking at is we've got to eat. If you watch what is going on with the different races, like for instance, if we take a look at the Udina, now the Udina are Hedipod. Okay, if you watch the, the show Arrival, okay, the way that they that they communicate, okay, and their whole language is built in literally it's it is it gets shown on our show on our screens. It gets shown as a two-dimensional circle. Okay. The reality is it's a three-dimensional bubble. Okay. But that's their language. And it's really interesting to watch it. But I think they did a fabulous job on showing that different type of communication. Okay. There are things like, for instance... Um, I believe it's a spare knock in. No, it's Fuente. It's a, um, the Fuente hand. The Fuente, you now, humans, when you meet, you shake hands. Okay, this is normal. No, for some reason, I really can't do that. Um, but when you meet, when you meet another human, you shake hands. Okay, either that or you bow. Okay, 
when the French in me to reach out and shake somebody's hand, this is not necessarily a good thing because they'll grab hold of your hand while you're looking at them and they will they will extend their stomach out over top of their hand over yours and literally dissolve the flesh off the body you know off the skeleton that's how they eat okay i mean you know we talk to humans talk about eating with your hand you know with your fingers these guys literally do and this is why way back in 1963 when Gene Roddenberry first came up with the idea of Star Trek, he told people then the biggest problem we would have with getting to know people, with getting to meet other races, is no cultural command, no cultural reference. This is why the Zeta Reticulans are building, are literally building the hybrid program program. You know, to grow cultural interpreters. But when you're meeting a different race, you got to know a little bit about them. Okay, that's what they're doing. They are absolutely getting to know humans. Yes, they're looking for the strengths and the weaknesses. But in all fairness, humans are number one. They still fight with each other, so the weaknesses are incredible. The strength, on the other hand, is another issue altogether. Okay, when we deal with the strength of, of humans, we are talking about the ability to adapt. Okay, yeah, we're very frightened. You know, humans have a very fragile, a very fragile uh, physical physical body. But you have learned very well how to compensate. How to keep yourself warm, how to keep you, how to armor yourself against certain things. And it's just one of these things that we gotta start looking at and going, yeah, it was somebody on the other side of the world that figured it out. But let me ask you this. And I think it was banning, I might be mistaken on that, I'm mistaken on that. That that event that discovered insulin. Okay. Now, that discovery was made, if I recall correctly, that was a Canadian. And it was shared with the world at large. Now, that one little discovery has been spread around the world. How many discoveries are being kept? I know of a couple of, of countries that literally keep their discoveries to themselves. You know, it is not a sign of strength to keep everything secret. Okay. And leads to a lot more problems than you might think. You know, but when you have the opportunity, if you get taken, and this is this is a real big if, do your best to stay calm. In 99% of the cases out there, people are not being taken to be tortured, to be fed to anybody. They are being taken to have blood samples taken you know, fluid samples, skin samples, and then put back. Granted, you are not asked if you're, if you're able to go. Okay, and that does cause trauma. But we got to remember, humans do exactly the same thing to tigers and fish and birds. You know, they do the same thing. They capture them, tag them, take samples, and then release them back to the world. And in most cases, the scientists that are doing that will stick around until the individual until the individual animal wakes up and can go on its way again. Again, this is just an issue of functional compassion. You know, overall, we are looking at a, at a world that is going to change. Some of you are the some of you that are, that are listening to this are going to see those changes, okay? Because the off-worlders are already here. They're not here to conquer the planet. They're really not after the gold. They never were, okay? Gold is a wonderful metal, but there are so many others available elsewhere 
that are extremely beneficial. I mean, yes, gold does have a nice little pond, does take a nice polish. But what you got to remember is most of that liking for humans is because of proper marketing. Okay, and yes, off-worlders also have their marketing thing. Oh, uh, where are we here? Yeah, Joe, quite often that really is the case. Oh, uh, where are we here? I gotta go back up a little. Um... Yeah, well, and that's the thing, L.A. Um, you know, the issue is, well, and that's why when the when the Greys take people, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was the, the Zeta Reticulans that ended up picking you guys up. Yeah, that's one of those, you know, one thing that I did find with the Zeta Reticulans, because they are a very fried race in a lot of ways. Okay. This is why most of the time they have Nordics with them. And somewhere in my collection, I think I found it the other day. So I am going to wear it right here. Tomorrow is the creative side. Okay, so that works. I'm just making a note for myself here for tomorrow to ensure that I track because I'm almost certain that I've got the picture with the actual name of the Nords, with their actual species name. But looking for it for months, I think I stumbled across it the other day. Yeah, that was that was a long time ago when we first met. And yeah, you know, it's been great from that end. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the neat things. Yeah. That would be that would be a somewhat of an overstatement, Valerie. Um, the Aldebarons, the tall whites, do actually abduct people, but not as much as you might think. But you gotta remember, they are a consortium. And every time one of the agreements that has been made amongst the consortium is when you find out information on research on another species, relay it to the main database. Okay. Now, of course, the one race that doesn't relay everything, and they've got enough productions. Okay. The Xerzix will never abduct. They've got no point to it. Oh, here we go. Yeah, Joe goes, uh, yeah, Joe's just going, um, preparing, you know. And that, I'm glad that's the case there, Joe. Not that you've been having all kinds of disconcerting paranormal experiences. But the things have helped to be a little stabilized that way. Well, that's a little bit better and more of a warning. <laughs> you know, really the other day. We're down to eight minutes. Oops. Thank you very much for that, LA.
needless to say, our throat has been holding. See, it was just a little while ago that I found out that it was literally the Zerzex that are keeping the Akashic Records in place. You know, one of the things we have to remember, and this is why I'm starting to put things together, it's a, it's a lot more work than I was expecting. And of course, the amount of time that I ended up with complications with technology and a completely useless effort in paying other people to advertise absolutely created a problem. Okay. And this is why I say where it comes to where it comes to my work. Ah, where are you? where are we? Uh, just looking. Forrest, how you doing? Glad you could join us. And yeah, for the most part, I'm doing not bad. It's been a bit of an odd day today, but uh, in 65, you know, I'm just reading what you wrote there, Forrest. In 65, when I was visited by a party of three very tall white ones, and by three, a very tall white one dressed in short and dressed in black, a short squat one with a squarish body. And just got to move that. And a gray. Um, where are we now? I haven't seen the question just yet, Forrest. I see the lead into it. Oh, yeah, obviously. What, I, what I'm waiting for there, I mean, Forrest just saying I was a child. Absolutely, in 65, I would hope so. I mean, we are talking 65, we're talking like 55 years ago. So if you were an adult, that's a lot older. But, yeah, you can bet your bottom dollar that Nathan will quite readily You know, um, you know, it was funny. I met one gentleman and years ago, and no, I'm not going to go into the details of it. That's his job. He go and spend a couple of weeks over a couple of years with him. It was funny. I told him that I had watched his event since the day it happened. And when we were laying it out, okay, and there is no way into this. This way, when he and I were talking, um, I I laid out what I remember, and he looked at me, and he goes, if, he says, there is only one way you could have known about that. I says, yeah. He goes, you had to be on the ship. I says, yeah. I said, well, I did tell you I've been watching you since the day it happened. And he goes, yeah, but I thought you were referring to you had been watching the report. I says, I can't do anything about that. Now,
Hey everybody, we're still trying to get some things patched up. Give us a couple of minutes, we'll try and get this, all this put back together. Just hang tight. And... All right, coming back in just a moment. Let's see here. All right, let's see if we can bring him back. Or try. The more detail you got, um, the easier it'll be for me to identify because the odds are I don't know them by the same name you do. Well, that's, and that's very kind of you there, Christine. You know, the reality is that, you know, that there's a lot of people going through things. And the worst thing I find is people that claim, as so many people I talk to that claim to be experiencers have no tolerance and no willingness to believe in the new, in the new experiencers. You know, I don't know about you, but I remember my first encounters. Heck, I remember my last encounters. First ones were not fun. Okay. But I refuse to sit here and tell somebody, oh, that didn't happen to you. I wasn't there. But no, like I was saying, um, when I was dating, when I was talking to Travis, he tried, I'm not going to tell you what I saw. That's his department. Okay. But when I laid it out for him, he goes, well, he says, the only way you could know that is if you were there, if you were actually on the ship. He says, yeah. I said, but then I did tell you that I went, you know, I did tell you that I've been watching it since it started. Yeah, unfortunately, there, Forrest. And I'm, I can't speak to why they didn't respond. The best I can tell you is if you send the information, if you've got it, ship it over. I will take a look at it. And I will give you an answer. I not give you the answer you're hoping for. But I will certainly give you an answer. You know, but so many people go through this sort of thing. And they don't have the support. This is one of the reasons why I decided... You know, a lot of why I've actually put the time in and said, okay, I won't shut it down. I just had to take a take a little bit of a restock and figure out which way things were going. But I will absolutely and again, I will give you the answer and then you can figure out what you want to pass on. And look at that. We are down to what? Where are we? Let's hit refresh and see what that does. Still loading. Okay. That's just over there. We don't even worry about that. But one of the things we have to remember here you know, one of the things we've got to remember is it is going to be this whole idea of interacting with people Well, I'm hoping that's an issue of, of things being a little different. Jim, I'm looking at the, at the other screen here. 
while it's trying to reboot. And Stand by, folks. We're going to try and get them back. Just bear with us. So, toss a little music in here. We'll be right back. And we are back. Well, enough to like hiccups to make the day go by. But no, the best I can tell you, Joe, my, my, uh, let me see if that sits there. No, I can't read that. That's too small. But no, if you send me the information, Joe, I'll more than happy take a look at it. I will give you a response to it. Okay. Because I there's a lot. I know of a couple of races that fit that. But I've got to go through like about that much paperwork with a whole pile of notes I've been clearing up and adding to the information. I'll be entertaining right? why I've started taking the races and including them with the band, with the pictures in positive perspectives. And again, if you'd like a copy of that, you just go to the top of the stream where where buy me a coffee is pinned. You just go to the top of the screen and we'll track down the free newsletter. I'll be more than happy to get you on the list. And what are we down to here? I cannot read that. Oh, we are down to our last 10 minutes by the look of it. Tomorrow, oh, there we go. Tomorrow we are looking and we are going to be looking at at literally the creative side of, of the whole concept of literally it's all about you. Okay. Because right now when you take a look at the different races and the different species, they are very similar in, a, in most ways. You've got a wide variety of outlooks. You've got a lot. Uh, you've got a wide variety. Um, get this, just to give you an idea. Okay, there there are a number of different species that literally are running around a wonderful little little theory that humans that humans should be they should be left alone. They should quarantine the planet and. St- Stay away from humans because humans will infest and destroy their communities. You know, because apparently not only are we volatile and creative, but we are also very, um, very aggressive and will eat their babies. You know, we will steal their children regardless of what species and we will eat them. Okay. Oh, in case you didn't know, according to some races, humans are averaging approximately twice their height. And when I'm talking about they're giants and humans are giants, I don't mean the that the fairy are talking about you being you being giants. I am talking about people like, for instance, um, if we take a look at the Aldebarans. The the Aldebaran the uh, the Aldebarans on their home world have been taught that humans are giants and extremely aggressive. The Martokians were taught that humans first and foremost we had six arms. Okay, 
you know, this is and this is something you gotta realize is people are still they still think humans are extremely aggressive. Okay. And there's all sorts of things that yo, know, you look at it and you think, okay, now humans are not like that, period. You know, but these are some of the misconceptions that off-worlders have, okay? That humans are, like, for instance, one of the other neat little things. Did you realize that roughly half of the human race have the ability to take their ears and their, and their eyes out? Okay, they literally have the ability to remove our eyes at will, okay? Now, here's where that comes from. Most humans refer to these, and a lot of the time, if you wear glasses, I'm sure you've said it, that you've said it to people around you. Where the heck did I put my eyes? Or, or if we're dealing with hearing aids, just let me grab my ears. Okay. Many of the races, and the Corlocks were brilliant with it. That's what brought them here to start with, was... Corlocks are shapeshifters. Okay. Humans are, are and we can disassemble ourselves. Okay, which is really neat. You know, apparently we can take our, our different organs out. Okay. The funny part about it is when do you remember an old game called called Operation? There were there were was a rumor going on that we cut each other up just for fun. And I'll tell you that kept some of the people away. But there's a lot of misinformation going on there. And that's why I haven't looked what's been being asked. Because I just don't have it. Now, thank you very much for the heads up there. You know, the reality is there's a lot of impact. we got to remember. The human society is similar to just about every society out there in one way or the other. There are commonalities. And we are going to have to look at that down the road, just not in the next five minutes. That is disconcerting. But too late to worry about it at this point. That said, you know, we will be back again tomorrow. Tomorrow we take a look at the real imagination side of things. And how to take that creative side and start putting it to use. Okay, so with that in mind, I will be back again tomorrow. Okay, tomorrow we're looking at the creative side. And of course, then I'm gone for Wednesday and Thursday. On Friday... We will be taking a look. We're literally going to be we're going to be focusing starting on Friday on healing modalities and how you can actually take your energy and accelerate your own healing, how that can affect the entirety of the gamut. Okay. But with that in mind, okay. Um, with that in mind, I will be back tomorrow. Until then, do take care of yourselves and each other. And for pity's sakes, stay positive.